What's up everybody, this is Dallas Doan here and today I'm going to be showing you a Substance Designer 5 beginner basic tutorial and I'm going to be breaking down the menu bar nodes. So here in Substance Designer 5 I created a scene um, and this scene is essentially just going to be me going through and showing you what all of these nodes do. So the first one is the bitmap, right? So when you click on that one it's going to ask you to find a file so for me I went and I just downloaded a texture when they went to textures.com grabbed a brick just to use here and uh, it shows up into your resources inside your so your shader on the left so that's the bitmap right and you can do a lot of things with this bitmap um, such as bringing this all the way hooking it up to your base right so I'm just gonna kill that for now because you don't need to do that but so that's the bitmap right it's pretty simple you import an image of whatever format you want P uh, PNGs JPEGs that is essentially a bitmap okay um, it could be a color it could be a gray and black and white um, texture whatever you want next on the dock is the blend node okay so that's the blend node so this is the blend node so to kind of show you what the blend node does I have created a polygon here uh, with uh, so I just went to polygons so this is a black and white image and then I took this noise as a black and white noise and I put it through a blend and then the blend you know you can decide how you want to do things when you're blending here you can change the blending mode so here it's just copy uh, here is you know subtract so you can make some really really cool kind of um, shapes like that's a pretty cool shape right there um, and for me I'm just gonna keep it min darken but yeah you change up your blending nodes your blending modes here um, so yeah so that's essentially a blend this when you want to blend two images together um, and all else has an opacity map or mask here as well so really good tool you're gonna to be using blends a lot when you're in substance designer next on the dock is the blur so for me I just plunked in the the blend what I got from the blend here and I just put it into the blur to kind of show you so take a look down here you're gonna see this is the shape that was created and then I put it through a blur right to kind of soften up all the edges so that's what blur blur is usually used to soften up edges to make things look a little bit more round so that's very very useful there next on the dock is the directional blur so the directional blur you can't really see it from here um, I'm gonna try and zoom here as much as I can and you can kind of start to see like this is controlling where the where the blur is coming from right so the blur is gonna happen this going this direction so if I go completely like this this is gonna be pretty sharp but everywhere else is gonna kinda get a blur if we go like this you're gonna see this is gonna be pretty sharp but everything else gets a blur so it's that's a directional blur um, let's see what else here I skipped the, sh the um, this one right here which is the sh channel shuffle I don't really use that so I skipped that one uh, FYI I totally forgot directional warp so a directional warp so this was our image before put it through a directional warp with a uh, Perlin noise and you get this this really helps when you do this kind of um, when you use the directional warp usually you're using it because you want variation in your shapes in your tiling texture right you just want to like change it up a little bit so that it doesn't look the same all the time so this is how you would do that um, I'm just gonna for fun just you know move this random seed here for the Perlin noise and you can already see it changes the shape quite a bit right so that's what that directional warp does distance to be honest with you I don't really use distance too much so I'm not gonna show you guys that emboss I don't really use emboss either I'm sure there's lots of um, reasons why these are here and there's probably tons of um, ways to use them but for me personally if you're a beginner you're not going to be using these very much the gradient dynamic node so for here I have placed this shape into this node and I've taken a gradient linear and I have put it going vertical I have the gradient variation turned to vertical and then this is what you kind of get okay so if you want to do this almost kind of like is like an invert almost um, but you can obviously change this gradient 
to a lot of different things. Um, so that's how that works. And then for the gradient map, what's really cool about the gradient map, which is the next one, is you put it through here. So this started off as a as a white and black color as well. So, and then I essentially changed the values. So this essentially started off like this, like gray. Oh, I'm just going to delete that one. It started off like this, right? And then I said, okay, I want the blacks in this texture to be red. I want the grays in this to be yellow. And then I want the white to be blue. Right? And so that's what you kind of get. Okay? So you're manipulating and changing the colors, essentially, um, to what you want it to go. So that's the gradient map. All right, so this is the grayscale conversion. So all I did here was I put in the gradient map into the uh, grayscale conversion. And what this does is this changes uh, any color texture or image or node and makes it into a black and white grayscale node, right? And this is important because sometimes you'll hit blends. Like when you're blending something, you can't blend a gray with a color, right? And, and I'll give you an example here. You can't. Sorry, I probably shouldn't have deleted that backspace. You can't do this, right? It's going to break. See this red? This red means no good, okay? And that's because this needs to be converted into grayscale. So if I really wanted to use this as, as a blending tool, that's what it would have to do, okay? So that is a good example of a grayscale conversion. So that's essentially what I am doing. Where was that? What I'm doing here. Okay, change this, turn it into grayscale. All right, um, next after that is the HSL, hue, saturation, and lightness. And anyone who uses Photoshop knows that this is super, super important. Uh, this is a, you use this a lot when it comes to creating textures, even in Photoshop. So you're going to be using a lot here in Substance Designer. Okay, essentially what it does is you can change the hue of things, right? You can change the saturation, right? You can make things into grayscale here. You can blast the saturation up. You know, you can do a lot of things here. Uh, lightness, you can make it completely dark. You can make it completely bright. So essentially, um, there's a lot of control here in the HSL. Next up is levels. So in the levels, I mean, this is, again, another very popular... Uh, photo correction technique in Photoshop that you're going to be doing quite a bit in Substance Designer to tweak all your mask, to tweak all of your um, black and white images. So very, very key and very, very important. So, you know, you can change things like this, right? You can make things a little bit lighter. You can bring in, bring out your image. So that is the levels. Now, normal. I'm just going to turn off the alpha here. So this looks pretty warpy and weird looking at the moment. But the normals here is essentially you're taking, you're saying, you know what, I like this image. This is going to be my, I want to make this into a normal map. So I'm going to plunk this into the normals node. So you take this, plunk it into the normals node. And then if you click here and then you put it into your normals, you're going to see your normal map here on your on your asset, right? So that is the normal, pretty handy. Um, PLX, I think it's the pixel processor. I don't use this, um, so I'm going to skip it. SVG, really, really cool. Here you can create your own shapes and such. Uh, so, you know, we can create your own shape and we can... Um, put shapes together, you can draw your own custom shapes, right, like freehand, right, you can freehand your own shapes, right, and then, so you can create your own, like, custom mass, shapes, whatever you like, okay, so that's the SVG, really, really helpful and very useful node. Next up is Sharpen. So you're going to notice, I'm actually going to stop this madness here. This is not looking pretty anymore, so I'm just going to bring this back. <clears throat> so this way it just doesn't look so weird. 
so what we have here is this is the shape that we created right and this is the sharpened version look down here you're gonna see the sharp the sharpness of these edges so that's the that, that's the shape before we put the sharpen on this is with sharpen on okay so sharpen another very common tool used in Photoshop another very useful one here in substance designer TRS is for transforms 2d so for example you put your SVG in here and you want to move it around you can right you can move it around um, I'll give you another example here let's throw this in here and let's say I want to make this smaller I want to center it you can you can rotate it like that right you can rotate it make a tile do whatever you want in here okay so that's the transform to D next is the uniform color so uniform color is you can literally it's just a flat color right so you can make this green you can make this blue for me I'm just gonna make this like a yellow maybe I'll make this like a beige yellow I'm gonna connect this to the colors and voila there you go now you have this yellow so that's the uniform color you can be using this quite a bit as well very very handy warp tool so the warp tool is pretty similar I find to the it's again another really useful tool to kind of change up your shape of what you have and I mean I've been using the Perlin noise quite a bit you can use anything really so I'm gonna use let's try this one instead and you're gonna find that it'll change it drastically right so obviously that really changed how my shape looks like so then maybe that's not the the right maybe that's a little bit too much but for this one you can really see the difference so I'm just gonna play around with the random here and you can see how the shape just starts to change right so it's just again a very useful way to kind of create variation inside your shapes and then yeah so that's pretty much the nodes there I don't honestly don't use too many inputs and input grayscale. I use a lot of I do use, create an output and I usually in the output I like to create a height mask or a not a height mask, a height node or a height output. So usually I'll create a height here. This way you can kind of see how the height is affecting the 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 mesh so I would go to height and group I call it material I believe because you want it to match material and then I usually go height here and then what you can do is you can plunk this height there and what you can do is no is that not, no you go to material sorry and then you go to channels or definitions you go to parallax and then you can kind of set the height so you can set the height here right so you can set the height here so scale now you can kind of see how it warps in and out um, so yeah so that's so that's so I usually make a height as an output and these last three is comments so here I have it says height output right so you can literally do that for anything um, if you want to leave like notes around now these three things are mostly for navigation right it's for organization of your scene really important especially if you're collaborating and working with other artists so for me working at a big studio like EA sometimes I'll do a texture but then it needs to be tweaked later on I might not have time to do those tweaks so another artist needs to be able to come into the scene and organize be able to look at this organized graph and fix whatever he needs to fix he or she needs to fix inside the texture so um, so that's comments so leaving comments and then having frames right so for me I put this frame around here to call it outputs and I'll, sh I'll load up an another scene here for you to give you an example in a second and then these navigation points are so handy so um, you just click on the navigation point right drag them place them wherever you want them to be and if you press F2 you're gonna start switching 
back and forth between them and this way things like having this right nice and easy do you know what I mean like that's super easy um, to do so yeah so back and forth back and forth so the pins really really handy and yeah that's pretty much the, the menu bar so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you guys the usefulness of the last three in another scene alright so this is a rock texture that I created and you're gonna notice that look how crazy this is right like if I didn't this this looks crazy but I'll be honest with you guys if you guys go to substance share download a bunch of other people's substance uh, substances you, there's way crazier more messy stuff out there and that's the whole thing is you don't it's a mess yes but you want it to be an organized mess so you, you'll notice that I'm using lots of frames here right to let people know this is the color ID that I'm using um, these are the curvature rocks shapes the edge wear here is happening all here um, you're gonna notice the erosion is happening here adding white spots to certain rocks is happening here uh, these are rock only masks so me selecting different type of mass these are different masks for different type of rocks these are all the normal maps here combined together roughness maps AO rocks height maps so so on and so forth right this is why this gets super handy and to imp to help improve a lot of this I probably should put some pins to be like hey so this is the pin for like all the mass these are all the pins for the height so that we're gonna hop back and forth between the two um, and to improve on that even more um, I should be probably adding some comments into here but yeah I mean for me this is a personal project of mine but it's a great example of how to organize um, you, uh, a complex graph I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you guys don't like the video, write in the comment section. Tell me what you guys don't like about it. Um, and hopefully in the future I can create better videos for you. And um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much. Take it easy.